Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Here we go. This is continuing the capital sense. This last class we did pride and anger, very much both of those coming from the ego, from the me, me, me. Uh, today we're going to uh, recognize some other ones uh, that are a little bit more sloth. We're going to do sloth and being greed. And then you're going to do an exercise on Socrative when we're all done, those three. All right, so let's just get rolling with sloth. Look at that cute little sloth. Wait, you mean I'm a sin? No, we're not talking about the animal. I think the sin came first. And then they saw this cute little animal moving so slowly amongst the trees in Australia. And they said, let's name it after the sin. That's just unfortunate. Anyways, sloth is by definition laziness in keeping the faith or practicing virtue. You just have no motivation to pray. You don't desire even to be a good person. You don't want to help anybody. You just don't care. This is a capital sin, and it's really probably the main cause of a lot of sins of omission. Sloth. Here's a, here's a, you don't have to write this quote down, but I put it on the slideshow because it really describes sloth really well. It says, from Dorothy Sayers, who might be canonized the same one day. Sloth is the sin that believes in nothing, cares for nothing, seeks to know nothing, interferes with nothing, enjoys nothing, hates nothing, finds purpose in nothing, lives for nothing, and remains alive because there is nothing for which it will die. That's what sloth is. You just have no motivation. You have no passion. You just sit on the couch and binge watch. And then you go to sleep and you do it all again the next day. It's this the lack of motivation. Examples, like I've already said, not praying regularly, failing to make the effort to go to mass. Um, I just don't want to go to mass. You know, I don't want to working my schedule it's not something i want to be at it's not something i'm striving for at the root of that of course is sloth um but this can go for academics too this can go for um, just living life like i said not one i i don't want to date i don't want to uh blah, 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 blah. i don't want to commit myself to another person why because you're just lazy you just you, you just don't have a desire to live that's law. That's sad. A lot of people get stuck in this their whole life. We always need to try to uh, remain motivated, especially during these times when you're all kind of stuck at home. The opposite of sloth is zeal. Zeal's word you may have never even heard of before, but it is defined as a passion for God. It's having a love for God that springs into action. I put like some like Avengers or whatever, who superheroes down here at the bottom, people that are just motivated, ready to go, ready to do the right thing. Um, zeal. Zeals will motivate them. Zeals will motivate people to give up a lot of hard things during lunch. Don't forget about that, by the way. Um, zeal is a passion for life and ma namely for God who gave you life. So that's the opposite of sloth. All right, moving on to capital sin number four, greed. I want it, I got it, I want it, I got it. I think that's Ariana Grande. I honestly don't think I've ever heard the song, but kids brought it to my attention last year that that song embodies the capital sin of greed which is defined as an immoderate desire for earthly goods. Ooh, I want that. I'm going to get it. I'm just going to get more and more. Do I need these things? No. Are they good for me? Not necessarily, but I want it. I just want it. So I go get it. Greed, 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 greed. More and more and more material things. As we know, this is level one happiness. This is seen in people who spend too much and can never possess enough, as well as people who spend too little and simply want to accumulate wealth. So there's a couple different extremes. Greed can be go out and uh, just work constantly. Just work, 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 get promoted, get money. That can be greed. Uh, 
all the, or the person who's always upgrading, always needs a new TV, always needs a new car, always needs a new phone, always has to have the latest thing. Do they need it? No. Is it beneficial for their soul? Not at all. They just want it. They need to be the most attractive, up-to-date person. This is often motivated by greed. And then there's Scrooge. Y'all should have seen or be familiar with the Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge. He doesn't have anything nice except a bank account. And even if you don't buy anything, greed can cause you just to store up a lot of wealth and be like, ha, I have money. That's greed. What's the opposite of greed? If greed is me, 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 give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. The opposite of give me is give me, give me, give back to other people. That means the opposite of greed is generosity, sharing what you have, giving as you receive and sometimes more. To find the generosity in your heart, to share with those less fortunate uh, than you. So that's the opposite of greed. If you struggle with greed, you pray for generosity. If you struggle with sloth, you pray for zeal. And then envy is defined as sorrow, like disappointment over another person's good fortune. Another person has whatever success. They get this award. They get this boyfriend, girlfriend, and you're like pissed off because they got what they wanted. <clears throat> People are envious because they believe that their own values are determined by external standards. Oh, I'm so envious. She has that new whatever. Uh, you kind of see that in this picture here. Uh, this woman with all the designer clothes and jewelry and purse or whatever you call that. That might be a clutch. I don't know. I'll let you ladies discuss that. But envy is like... Um, Oh, I wish she didn't have it. I wish he wasn't so good at this sport. That's envy. You want somebody to fail. Examples, this comes out in gossip. I want people to know how bad this person is. Not all gossip is caused by envy, but a lot of it is. A lot of it is you just want somebody to fail. And then curses and voodoo, which we'll talk about in chapter six. That's a real thing. People can't send a curse, can really do damage uh, by wanting somebody to fail the voodoo dolls thing. It's, it's real. It's real. So if envy means I want somebody to fail, the opposite of envy is I want somebody to succeed. I want somebody to prosper. I want somebody to experience goodness. And the opposite of envy is charity which is a desire for another person's good. This is just straight up love. Envy is the opposite of love. Envy is the opposite of love. The opposite of envy is love, also known as charity, which is you want somebody to succeed. You're happy that they're happy. You're happy that they're succeeding. You're happy that they got that award. You're happy for them that they're happily married to your ex-boyfriend, girlfriend. Like That's going to happen one day for some of y'all couple of years. You, you just to be happy for them. I, I hope that leads them to heaven. That's the opposite of envy. Okay. Um, and y'all know what charity is. We're going to cover the last two capital sins, lust and gluttony. Next lesson right now, you should go to Socrative. You have three Bible passages to look up where you might want to write down the answers for these Bible questions because you might see them on a quiz coming up next week. See if you can pinpoint the capital sin associated with that Bible verse. And that'll be it for your short lesson today. Don't forget to keep working on your research paper to avoid the capital sins. And to love the Lord with your whole mind, heart, and soul. From Broad Bridge, Louisiana, we have to turn this Catholic High School. This is Mr. Pale. Yeah,